stand, please? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The Lord's steadfast love never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. We'll sing the first hymn on the order of service. Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet that tribute bring. my soul the king of heaven to his feet thy tribute bring ransom healed restored forgiven evermore his praises sing praise him praise him praise him praise him praise the everlasting king praise him for his grace and favor to our fathers in distress praise him still the same forever slow to chide and swift to bless praise him praise him praise him praise him glorious in his faithfulness father like he tends and spares us well our feeble frame he knows in his arms he gently bears us rescues us from all our foes praise him praise him praise him praise him widely yet his mercy flows Frail as summer's flowers we flourish, blows the wind and it is gone. But while mortals rise and perish, our God lives unchanging on. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, Praise the High Eternal One. Angels help us to adore Him. Ye behold Him face to face. Sun and moon bow down before Him. Dwellers all 
time and space. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise with us the God of grace. Blessed be God, our Father, Blessed be Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Holy Spirit. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the commands of our brother Wilmot Jefferson for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit in confirmation. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of grace, that he'll raise keep the perfection in the company of the saints. Amen. Please sit. We are here this morning to give God thanks for the life and work of our brother, Wilmer Jefferson Bonick, and to celebrate his memory. It is for us, in our Anglican tradition, a worship service in which we give God thanks and praise. The order of service is set out, and there are no announcement so when your time comes to do anything on the program, then you'll come up and do that without any announcement. And I think you say that any praise and applaud will be to the glory of God and not to the person who has done what he has done. So we'll come now with the first tribute by Mr. Norman Marshall and we'll go in that order without any further announcement. Archdeacon Thomas, Mr. Crawford, Mrs. Motley, other distinguished guests. Um, firstly, allow me to express my sincerest condolence to Akiva, Chantal, Mekiel, grandchildren, and the rest of the family for the most regrettable loss of their father, grandfather, other relatives, and other relations. As my hope is for them to lift up and live because that is what Jeff would want. I'll be doing a short tribute on behalf of Clarendon College past students and particularly the Davy boys who shared so much with Jeff. Bonick, Willie, or Jeff was what we called him. But um, let me tell you that Jeff was the first CC person I met going to Clarendon College. I met him with his mother while coming from Cross Hill to go to registration at CC. And we picked him up with his mother in Crawl River in Mr. Mahoney's blue Austin Cambridge. If anybody can remember that. R2770 was the license plate. 
and we journeyed to CC. And from then on, we developed an everlastingly good relationship. And that was 648 months ago. Good time, yeah? As a day boy, and for those of you who don't know, a day boy is a non-boarding school person. Jeff was close to many persons. But I remember his association with Oliver Bryson, Franklin Ferguson, Norman Reed, among many others. In fact, he used to pass on his notes over the years to Norman. But I later learned that it was an investment to get free passage to go to Woodhall where Norman was from. And Norman tells me that he used to come off at four pass instead of Coco Peace and walk to Woodhall. But there's something else about Jeff I need to let you know. Jeff was a very poor PE student, you know. He couldn't run to save his life. And that was evidenced by him always running last when we're running from the Rangers at Danks, where we spent numerous hours tasting the lovely fruits of the land. Of course, Jeff was a bugle blowing member of our cadet band. In fact, he and I started out blowing bugle, but he was much better at it than I was. And I graduated and um, inherited the drums from Stanley Grant. But he was one of our best buglers. And um, Clive Fagan will tell you that we had a lovely, lovely cadet band, even though um, Mr. Bonnick might not agree, but we had the best cadet band in the school. And talking about um, cadets, one cannot possibly forget our cadet camp at Bella's Gate. This was a camp that Jeff was highly instrumental in trimming quite a few people, including his best friend Tunkus, also known as Patrick Morgan. The idea was that we would go to sleep early and then wake up later in the night and um, trim all those who were soundly asleep at the time. And let me tell you, Jeff and Tunkus had a very, very close relationship. And when we were in third form, for instance, Jeff took Tunkus in for a very long time and fed him, clothed him, took care of him while going to school. So Tunkus, who unfortunately isn't here today, has a great debt of gratitude to Jeff. Just a pity that Tunkus didn't pass on all of his domino skills to Jeff, who would have been learning a little bit about that game even late in life. Now one of the few things you get from cadet camp was how to bathe very fast. And let me tell you, that was one of the things Jeff excelled at. He had the record in David Dormitory for the second fastest bath in one minute, 23 seconds. And he only came second because he washed his hair. He came second by 13 seconds. Jeff was a potential wicketkeeper batsman who did okay in house matches and so on and um, played a little table tennis and all that sort of stuff. But as I said before, he couldn't run to save his life. But he was also a good negotiator. 
And um, having found out that he wasn't good enough to make the team, he proceeded to negotiate to be the scorer in almost everything we did so that he would be traveling with the team wherever the team went. And um, while we were at Davy, we used to borrow shirts and ties and all these sort of things, you know, so that it appears that we were rotating them. And I can't forget the red and white shirt that I borrowed from Jeff to wear to Janet Ricketts party in Chapleton. And um, that shirt was a beautiful shirt. It, 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 caused, it, it got me one of the best girls at the time at the party. But I'm not sure how Jeff made out at the party itself. But I do know that once he got nicked by Nikki, he was all about her. And he would be either following or going before Kingsley to Woodhall until all hours in the night. So much so that I understand that every gravel on the road to and from Woodhall was known by them. I don't know, there was something about Jeff Kingsley and Tunkus going to Woodhall that I wasn't so sure about. But one thing I know, that Jeff ended up marrying Nikki and they produced three children. I suspect one for Kingsley, one for Tunkus, and one for himself. Although this is not strictly Clarendon College, I have to mention something about how his mother would beat the hell out of him when he gave her a reason to. And you know, Jeff is a big storyteller, you know. And whenever you go, wherever Jeff is, he'll be telling stories about his cousins coming from Kingston and how his mother would beat them after they had a fight with the girls and thump them on their breasts. <laughs> and his mother would flog the daylights out of him. And in one instance, um, Jeff would make up the bed, padded it, to leave the impression that he was inside the bed. And his mother would creep up in the night and flog the, um, <laughs> the thing. And Jeff was outside looking in, you know. Um, and then there's a case of Jeff. I mean, this is not so easy to set a funeral. It ought not to be said anyway. But um, let me just so politely I can say it. There was some gun thing at school. And Jeff was involved, and his mother came to school and beat him, beat the daylights out of him. And um, but Jeff used to feign pain a lot when he was being beaten, you know. So his mother would be sorry for him at um, some point in time. And Jeff visited us usually on Friday nights, while some of us were engaged in an extremely friendly poker game. But he never played poker. I don't, Chantal, you don't know this, but the thought of losing money was something that Jeff never entertained. And his ever present frugality would prevent him from participating in the games. And again, Chantal. I must tell you about his frugality. Jeff was a smoker, you know, at some point in his life. But he never bought a cigarette. But as he grew older, I thought the frugality might have waned because I think it was last year, December, when Kingsley came to Jamaica, he and Kingsley and I went to Macaw and he bought the drinks. So, prestare et prestare.
persevere and excel. That is the life that Jeff lived. Graduating from CC, going to CAS, then to UWI, and then to JPS, where he was an outstanding employee. And again, he told us many stories at JPS, including the fact that he had to fire his very good friend. For I guess, um, I think he was driving vehicles beyond where they should have been driven or beyond the time that it should have been. Last year, I think it was August 31st, I believe, we had planned to be at the CC reunion in Florida, and there was a storm that was um, around the place, I think, somewhere in Florida. And um, he canceled, but uh, myself and other people went. But he called all the time to find out what was up, what was going on, so he knew that his spirit was there. The last time we had a get-together was in December, I think it was December 29th. Not so sure. Down by Jim Thomas in Maypen, where Kings the Boer sing, Tunkus, Teddy Richards, Thomas Williams, Oliver Chen, <clears throat> Juno Burnett, Lenny Hyde, Denden Hutchinson, Norma Barnsville, and many, many more. And we had a good time reminiscing and telling old jokes about the good old CC days. I know Norman used to send him songs in the mornings. I gave him lemons occasionally, and we always kept in touch. I never knew that his time was nigh. In a world where death is, we should have no time to hate because all lives matter, including black lives. J-E-F-F. -F. What does that mean? Just exquisitely funny and friendly. And that was Jeff. So we say farewell, brother. You lived a good life. We treasure greatly your friendship and we will forever treasure the wonderful memories we all had. May your soul rest in peace. Um, good, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Peter Henry, and I extend my deepest condolences to Jeff's family and friends. I've known Jeff for over 30 years professionally and personally, while we both worked at JPS. So I'm here to represent the JPS side of Jeff. We, um, Jeff, I left, uh, I left JPS in um, 2000, and I went back on contract for a couple of years in 2007. Let me start by saying, Jeff was the nicest guy you could ever meet. Jeff started working at, G at JPS in September 1979, just after graduating with a degree in electrical engineering from UWI St. Augustine in Trinidad. He spent 20 years with the organization, during which time he progressed in the engineering and managerial stream and was appointed director in October 1997. During that time, he made significant contribution to JPS in the field of engineering and in supporting development of engineering skills, talent in the company. Jeff helps 
this senior position until he left in October, until he left in October 2002 to form his own company. I joined JPS in the summer of 1986, coming straight from UWI, St. Augustine also. My first boss was Jeff, and it was while he was a manager for distribution design division. This, this division is responsible for all major designs across the island. So it's from St. Thomas to Negro. I clearly remember that my first day on the job, Jeff and Camo, his assistant at the time, took me to an upgrading project at Island Dairies in St. Thomas. And if you know St. Thomas, this was a complex project because it involved running the, the lines across rugged terrain and across rivers. It was at this early stage that I realized the experience and depth of engineering knowledge that Jeff had. He put forward somewhat, a somewhat a simple but very practical solution to solve the complex problem to allow us to provide the supply to the dairy. Jeff's unique management style um, was displayed by his hands-off approach, empowerment of his workers, but always somehow providing constant follow-up, if you know what I mean. All new engineers and technicians wanted to be in Jeff's department because he was the coolest boss in the division. Jeff believed in workers and would go out on a limb to protect their interests. Can I say, even Jeff's manner of dressing was an inspiration to most young engineers. He knew how to put himself together and was always looking sharp. On a more serious note, Jeff gave young engineers the challenge they deserve to grow within the organization by promoting them in responsible roles and providing the support they needed to succeed. And to this day, many engineers can speak about the positive impact that he made in their professional development. Very importantly, Jeff treated everyone with respect, no matter their duties, and he paid special attention to the need of linesmen because he valued their contribution to, to, in ensuring the safety and reliability of the JPS supply to its customer. Last but not least, he was a very humble person. During his ten, tenure at JPS, Jeff made significant contributions to the company. I will just highlight a few. J, J, Jeff was involved in the development of what we call the ES1300 distribution standard. This was the Bible, so to speak, that is used by all engineers for the safe design and construction of all distributions line across the company. Jeff established the technical standards department, uh, working along with external consultants from England and our local engineering team, working tirelessly to develop the critical, this critical department and was responsible for, for the standardization of the TND process across the company. As you know, JPS is for, Jamaica's 14 parishes and you have 14 districts, 14, 14 small JPSs across. So it was important to standardize the, the standards, the engineering, the procedures so that it will be consistent. Jeff, along with the civil engineering department, introduced concrete poles to JPS. As you know, we were doing wood poles. Wood poles pose a problem with the delivery because it, it has come from the US or some other country. And also, it had a problem with the, the, um, the, 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 the lifespan in terms of rotting and deteriorating. So Jeff, working along with the civil department, introduced concrete poles to JPS. This required extensive research and a trip to Israel. 
to see firsthand the manufacturing and use of these poles. Working with HR department, Jeff, Jeff helped to create a specialist category in the management stream to enable engineers to stay in the technical area while not losing the benefits of being promoted to a cost center manager. What it means, JPS, you, um, you're an engineer with a first degree. You, you work hard, you do the hard work, the technical work, but sometimes to get the compensation, what was happening that you'd have to switch to management. And when you, when you do that, what happened, you lose the technical expertise and you end up doing more managerial type work, you know, um, leaf forms and budgets and so. So what Jeff did, working along with other teams, he came up with an idea that said, listen, we're going to ensure that you can stay in the technical field while you get compensated in a parallel way to managers. So it, it enabled JPS to retain that expertise and not just to, I mean, sideline it by promoting people. Jeff, and lastly, in, in terms of the small, Jeff was instrumental in a structured and professional evaluation of JPS tender that were required for the supply of TND, which is transmission and distribution material and equipment. Prior to this process, JPS would probably go out to tender and probably just buy from the cheapest. But cheapest is not, not necessarily good. So what, based on what, what the idea that Jeff put forward was let's do a proper technical evaluation and invite the, the key players, the, the accountants, the engineers, and then we would do a proper evaluation to ensure that the item or the goods that we're getting will serve JPS in its best interest and not necessarily the lowest price. Jeff was, made a, was, was promoted to the manager for that group in the early stages. Last but not least, Jeff played, Jeff played a significant role in the reconstruction of the JPS distribution system island-wide after it was ravaged and devastated by Hurricane Gilbert in 1988. I mean, I'm sure that you can remember, after Hurricane Gilbert, you could see up in Papine, you could see crossroads. All lines were down, 99%. So Jeff, along with his team, was a key person in, in, in um, coming back up with the designs, estimating the material needed, you know, talking to the World Bank, the IDB, other, some other supporters to get the line back up. And, and of course, he did it, and the lines were done and put, put back up in a better fashion, stronger than, than pre-Gilbert. All right, let's go to a little side story about Jeff. In Trinidad, what we call arbitrariness. No joke. My first opportunity to drive an expensive car after just getting my license was because of Jeff. He called me into his office one day and said, hey, Peter, can you drop this package to Nikki for me? It's urgent. So I said, sure. So he said, here's the keys to my car. But remember, she's in Maypen, the first time I'm driving. Whoa. <laughs> and the car was a Mercedes. What a challenge for me. But he believed in me. And to cut a long story short, I did it without any major problems. Another quick story. On an occasion of his daughter, Akiva's wedding in Europe, Jeff became, because he was tied up with the, the work, and was under a little pressure on the morning that he was required to leave to Europe. He came to me because he had an issue. And he reached out for me for help. I, I did help him and he was able to make the flight. But that shows you that he was just a normal guy. In closing, Jeff was loved by customers, staff, suppliers, contractors, and even the union, as you know, the union is a hard nut to crack. We will all miss, miss him, but we're hoping that the memories of completing this complex project 
hanging out at the sports club, the trips to Maypen to see Nikki, and beyond. Christmas parties where all were invited, and they were not officially invited. I would like to say to the family that GPS, past and present team, will always be here for you. We love you all, and may his soul rest in peace. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone.
Wilma Jefferson Bonick was born on October 29, 1953 to the late Albert and Violet Bonick at the Chapelton Hospital. His mother and father were very happy when they finally had a boy some 20 years after their first child. Jeff, as many affectionately called him, was the baby in the family. Jeff grew up in Crawl River, in Clarendon, and had two older sisters, Ruby Brainbridge and Ines Thomas. Daddy's childhood years were filled with joy and laughter that he shared with his sisters Sheila and Charm and his brother Tony and later Jerry. These were not his biological siblings but rather his nieces and nephew. His mother raised them together and instilled a bond between them. In fact, he actually had to pay them to call him uncle when he wanted to impress his friends. And to charm Aunt Sheila, Uncle Tony, and Uncle Jerry are mourning the loss of their brother right now. Daddy lost his father at a young age of 15, and so his mother became a very important parental figure to him. It was through his mother that he learned the strength of a woman. Granny, as everyone called her, was a very strong-minded Christian woman who taught Daddy the importance of God and the importance of a strong woman to build a home and family. Daddy spent his formative years boarding at Clarendon College where he formed lifelong friendships with a special group of boys that grew up together from the age of 10 to be the men they are today. They fondly gave him his pet name Lobster Lobby because he could eat every and anything and could not get fat. It was also during this time that he met his childhood sweetheart, Nikki, through his best friend and her brother, Donnie, who he later married and had three children, Akiva, myself, and Mikkel. Daddy was also a part of the cadet where he played the bugle and so today, at the end of this service, we will honor Daddy by closing with the bugle. Daddy later went on to attend the University of Technology and then completed his engineering degree at the University of the West Indies in Trinidad. This day was the proudest day for his family. Daddy's first job after graduating from UWE was as an engineer Sorry, Daddy's first job after graduating from UWE as an engineer was with the Jamaica Public Service, or as, all we, as we all know it, JPS, where he would spend more than 20 years developing his career. He rose from a trainee engineer to become the Director of Distributions and Operations, whilst also studying for his MBA. Daddy, accept, Daddy accepted an offer of redundancy at JPS and saw it as an opportunity to launch out on his own. In 2004, he started his own engineering company and became CEO and Managing Director at Intellex Company Limited. However, Daddy always acknowledged that JPS gave him the opportunity to explore the world. And whilst at JPS, he became admired for his tenacity and kindness, as well as his knowledge and experience. My dad, meant the world to me. He was so laid back and relaxed about things, but was stern when he needed to be. There were two things my dad wanted from me. One, that, I, that anything I did, I did it to the best of my ability. And two, that I enjoy life and look for the positive in things. He was a very generous person. If you were truly in need, and asked for his help, he would go above and beyond for you, even if it meant giving the last of what he had. 
He loved his wife and children and often made sacrifices for them. I know a lot of people probably think this about their parents, but I honestly had the best parents in the world. I couldn't have asked for better, and I hope we as their children made them proud. As my sister Akiva wasn't able to make it due to the global pandemic, she has sent a video with a few words of her own expressing what dad meant to her. The fondest memory of our father for me would be the three of us sitting around listening intently to his childhood stories. Even though we heard these stories over and over again, we would end up laughing so hard each time. There were stories of him and Auntie Sheila encountering a rolling calf on the way home, and Auntie Sheila would get home by running across a river. He was amazed that she was not wet. On cue, we fell to the ground laughing our heads off. Or there was a time he did something very naughty and Granny, his mother, stopped by his boarding school to sit on top of him so that she could beat him in front of everyone. Another story with Auntie Sheila had Daddy setting her nightgown accidentally on fire and Daddy chasing her around the house to save her. Daddy's stories would also show us how tough he was back then. My dad would complain that he had to bathe in the cold river while we were so spoilt we couldn't take a shower if the water wasn't hot enough. Stories like these were his fondest memories and even though we had a belly full of laughs, as I grew up I learned something valuable about our father's character that I am sure is evident to many people who knew him. Daddy was an optimist. He always looked at things positively or with laughter. Family was very important to him, especially at the time of growing up, his mother. My father's cure in life was to have a good laugh. Now, I could speak about many things regarding daddy. I could speak about his years at JPS, the many places he traveled for work such as Sweden, Israel and the United States and how he touched many lives. I could mention that JPS was like a family even though he left some 15 years ago or how he was a key person to take Jamaica out of the numerous blackouts that used to occur back then. I could mention the respect for daddy I saw in his colleagues when I was lucky enough to do my internship at JPS or the warmth in his colleagues voice when they were remembering something my father did to assist them in their career. Alternatively, I could talk about his relationship with mom, how dad married his childhood sweetheart because he met mom through his very good friend, my mom's brother, Uncle Donnie. I could speak about how invested my dad was in whatever mom was doing. Whatever numerous project my mom was working on, dad was there with her every step of the way. So much so, I used to wonder, was it my dad's project or my mom's project? I could also mention how dedicated my father was to mom in her final days as he watched over her while she was in the hospital. It broke his heart when mom left us to be with God. He said to me, I've been with your mom for over 40 years. What do I do now? Instead, I focus on his optimism because in the last few years of his life, after mom passed away, we became much closer than before. Dad and I would speak almost every day. If we didn't hear from each other for three days, we would be concerned. In these last years while fighting cancer, he was very hopeful. We would encourage each other. He would share the positive results of his tests and his most favorite, he would share funny stories of mom. 
one story entailed daddy and mommy taking turns to hug each other at night because they both liked being the one hugged. However, at one point, daddy was able to trick mommy in giving him hugs consistently for one week. Mommy wasn't very happy when she found out she was tricked. There is another story that he loved to tell. This one entails my sister being out one night and mommy deciding that she wasn't going to sleep until Shani got home. At a certain time in the night when Shani wasn't back as yet, mommy decided that she was going to find Shani even though she didn't know exactly where she was. She told daddy to get dressed. However, this time around, daddy refused. Nikki, daddy said, Shani soon come home, go to sleep. Of course, mommy wasn't having any of it. She proceeded to complain that that child was inconsiderate for putting her through this and she was going to have a word with her when she got home. May I just add that Shani was a young working adult at the time. Mommy started to get dressed and demanded daddy do the same. Luckily for daddy, Shani arrived home. Mommy went downstairs, gave Shani a hug and a kiss and went back to bed without saying anything. We both had a good laugh at this story because we both know how stubborn mom and Shani can be and poor dad would have been caught in the middle as usual. Daddy's optimism was his shining light. It drove him to persevere through mommy's death and his cancer. I can tell you, even up to a month before his death, we were talking about the good results he had from his tests. I'm not saying daddy's life was only laughter. He had his ups and downs like everyone else. But what was unique about my dad was how he could focus on the good in life and the good in people. It is the one thing that I hope to manifest in my life. Like my dad, try to be positive, be kind to others, and have a good laugh. My dad was a very popular man and was loved by many. So much so that we had multiple requests from many people to attend the funeral. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19 restrictions, we were limited on the number of people we could invite. However, I'm sure that in the absence of these restrictions, the church would not be able to accommodate everyone. And that is tribute to how much to how loved he was by family, friends, and acquaintances. We have received so many messages of love, prayers, and condolences, and we as a family thank you for that. I would also like to thank, I would also like to thank you all, those present here in the church and those watching via live stream for celebrating daddy's memories with us. I loved him, I loved him so much. But I know that he is happy to be with mommy again. And they're both smiling down on us. Thank you.
Let us pray. O oh God, before your face, the generations rise and pass away. The strength of those who labor and the repose of the holy and blessed dead. Remember today all who have faithfully lived, served you, and died, especially our servant Wilmot Jefferson. Lift us into life and love and give us our portion with all those who have in their lifetime trusted in you and striven to do your will. And to your name, O oh Father, with the church on earth and in heaven, we ascribe all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Remember, O oh Lord, we pray, your servant, Wilmer Jefferson, who has gone before us with a sign of Christian faith and now rests in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant to him and to all who rest in Jesus Christ refreshment, light, and peace through the same your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us a day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The first reading Good morning. Praise be to God. Oh that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead, or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him. With my own eyes, I and no, not another, how my heart yearns within me. Amen. He makes me down to lie In pastures green He leadeth me The quiet waters by He lives, He lives, He lives I know that my Redeemer lives, He lives, He lives he lives within my heart. My soul he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make. Within the path of righteousness, he for his own name's sake. He lives, he lives. He lives, he lives, he lives within my heart. Yea, though I walk. 
walk in death's dark veil, yet will I fear no ill. For thou art with me and thy rod, and staff me comfort still. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives. He lives, he lives within my heart. My table thou hast furnished, in presence of my foes. My head thou dost with oil anoint, and my cup overflows. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives, he lives. He lives within my heart. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me. And in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall. He lives. He lives. He lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives. He lives, he lives within my heart. Wilmot Jefferson Bonnick, such a genuine human being. My condolences. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 to 9. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are but temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Second Corinthians 5, 1 to 9. For we know that if our earthly house, that this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made of hands, eternal in heaven. If so, be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothes upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that has wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident 
knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present in the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted by him. Here endeth the reading of the words of the Almighty. Thank you. Angels' voices ever singing round the throne of light. Angels' harps forever ringing, rest not day nor night. Thousands only live to bless thee and confess thee, Lord of my. this mortal I can scan. Can it be that thou, regardless song of sinful man, can we feel that thou art near us and wilt hear us? Yes, we Rejoices o'er each work of thine. Thou didst ears and hands and voices for thy praise combine. Craftsman's art and music's treasure for thy pleasure all come by. Here, great God, today we offer of thine own to thee, and for thine acceptance proffer all unworthily. Hearts and minds and hands and voices in our choices mellow. Honor, glory, might, and merit thine will never be. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, of the best that thou hast 
given earth and heaven render thee Lord speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of your tone as you have sought so let me seek your erring children lost and lone oh teach me Lord that I may teach the precious things that you impart and wing my words that they may reach the hidden depths of many a heart in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen please sit I'd like at this point in time to express our sincere sympathy at the passing of our brother, Wilmot Jefferson Bonick, and to express to the children and grandchildren, the sons-in-law, our prayers to you at this time, and to assure you that our presence here is indicative of our support to you as you go through this hour of loss. It was four years ago that we remembered Nicola, known to me as Nikki, and the same chapel at her funeral service. from the gospel according to saint john chapter 6 and verses 28 and 29 saint john chapter 6 verses 28 and 29 the people asked jesus what must we do to do the work god requires jesus answered the work of God is this to believe in the one whom he has sent so today we are here in the context of this funeral service to give God thanks for the life work and witness of his servant Wilmot Jefferson Bonick to bid him farewell as he leaves our shores to enter into the joys, the blessings and benefits of a salvation won for him by our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. We celebrate his life and work among us. So let me use this opportunity to extend a welcome to you to this service of worship and thanksgiving and as I do so let me ask you to understand that we are in a period where the disaster risk management portfolio is with us because of COVID-19 and we have to abide by the laws laid down by those in authority the protocols are for our own good and welfare. As I said earlier, we could have had many more people at this funeral service, but we have to stick by the protocols. A number of persons would like to give their tributes, verbal tributes, but time will not allow so I ask you to consider your presence here as your tribute to our brother and your friend. God has called us to be in his service as his witnesses and agents to carry on the baton of his love, of his forgiveness 
that he has willed for us from age to age. Our brother received from those who had gone before, and now I'm sure he has passed on to you and me, who are his heirs and successors, to take up that baton and do our leg of the relay in the journey of life. Whether his leg of the relay was strong or weak, it is not for you and me to judge. In the text, the question is asked, what must we do to be doing the works of God? People are asking this question all the time, especially when they reach the autumn years of their lives, our senior years, and on occasion like this, at funeral service. The rich young ruler asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? A lawyer asked the same question. On the day of Pentecost, the people asked the same question, what must I do to be saved? The question is asked with mixed motives and intentions. The rich young ruler in St. Mark's Gospel and the Jews in St. John's Gospel asked the question with serious and sincere intention. In the case of a lawyer, it was asked with a purpose to entrap Jesus in his talk. Much the same obtains today. Mixed reactions. Some ask a question with a serious intention. Others ask out of ridicule. To fulfill the commandments of God. To love him and our neighbors as ourselves. And to believe in Jesus Christ is the son of God. Is what we ought to be doing all the time to be said to be doing the works of God. There are some people, and especially the Jews, who believe that to be fulfilling the works of God is to be doing good works and become slaves to the law of Moses. It's always part of Jewish thought and theology that a man by living a good and moral life could win and earn the favor of God. People, they thought, could be divided into three classes, the good, the bad, and the in-between. So when the Jews asked a question about the works of God, they were expecting to have the rules laid down for them, the do's and don'ts. But this is not what Christian theology teaches. This is not what we believe as Christians. In a letter to the Romans, Paul spent a lot of time explaining that the promise of God is based on faith, on belief, in order that the promise should be guaranteed as God's free gift to all of, of Abraham's children, to you and me. Not just to those who obey the law, but also to those who believe as Abraham did. In the general letter of James, we read, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. To do the works of God is to believe in the person that God has sent, that is Jesus Christ. To put it in a simple way, the one thing that God desires of you and me is that we have faith. In the service of baptism and confirmation, 
The person being baptized comes to God not because of his own goodness, but because of faith. And through faith will come the renunciation of wrong and obedience to the God's will and a pledge to live and walk by them all of life's journey. Faith means belief. A certain relationship with God, that being such a relationship, we become the children, the sons and daughters of God. And because of this, there is no fear in that relationship. God is to us like a good shepherd to his sheep, like good parents and grandparents to their children, like genuine friends showing care and concern and giving and sharing of themselves. In such a relationship, there is faith, there is trust, there is obedience, there is submission. The whole essence of Christianity is that man would not have been able to respond to God in love if Jesus had not come and told us that we could. Jesus came and taught us that God is our Father who is in heaven, that God loves us, that God cares for us, and that God is anxious to forgive our wrongs and shortcomings and to restore us to a position of grace. Because of this teaching, the gulf between us and God that resulted in strangeness, in distance, in suspicion, and in enmity is taken away and a new relationship is developed, that of trust. In this way, a new kind of life begins to unfold. We know that what God is like and therefore our lives must respond to and reflect that knowledge that God is love, and that we are in our day and age, God's agents of love. And through our work, we represent God all the time. And that response will be, be in three areas, each of which Jesus tells us about God, that God is love, that God is holy, and that God is wisdom. Our lives, in our lives, there must be a love for and a service to others which corresponds to the love and service of God. We talk of our gifts to God and we do so in terms of giving of ourselves in worship, in love, in service, helping others in the name of and for the sake of Jesus Christ and his church. Our lives must reflect the forgiveness of God in a way that demonstrates our willingness to forgive those who try to make things difficult for us and others in our pursuit of our duty and responsibilities. God is holy. In our lives, there must be holiness, a purity that corresponds to the holiness and purity of God. Jesus exhorts us all the time to be holy as he is holy. God is wisdom. In our lives, there must be that perfect submission and trust that corresponds to the wisdom of God. Because 
It is our belief that God is perfectly and completely wise. We must accept his guidance and direction in our everyday activity, at worship, at work, and during our hours of recreation and leisure. That is that to which we aspire as God's people. As we come in this funeral service, it is our hope that we will renew ourselves in God to be the one who in our lives represent what he means to our people. To belong, to be doing the works of God is to be serving God. At the end of physical life's journey, we will go through the portal of death and to be with our Lord. Therefore, when we come to funeral service, though we mourn, though we grieve, yes, because we are human beings, beyond our tears, beyond our grief, there is our trust that death is a gateway through which all Christian persons will walk to enter God's presence. Our brother, Wilmot, whose life we are now celebrating, was one who tried in life to fulfill the, the dictates of our Lord, and our church understands and interprets it. He tried to meet the expectation of what was demanded of him to be doing the works of God, to fulfill the commandments of God, to love God with all our being, and to love our neighbors as ourselves, and to believe in Jesus Christ, whom God has sent into the world to restore us in that relationship with him. And so as we go and we say to our brother, farewell, we go and take up from him the baton and make our pledge to carry on that baton which he had left behind and move on in the faiths that God has given us in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Be ascribed to him all might, all power and glory, which are most justly due, henceforth, now and always. Amen. Let us stand, please. Let us with confidence and hope Confess the faith of our baptism as we join together and say, I believe in God the Father Almighty. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. After each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and your response will be, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. may all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection die to sin and rise in newness of life. And may we with him pass through the grave and the gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear prayer. grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrows on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved. Especially we pray today for the children and the grandchildren of our deceased brother, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and the joyful expectation of everlasting life with those whom they love. Lord, in your mercy, your prayer. Father of all, we pray to you for Wilmoth and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May your servant Wilmoth and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. We now have the operatory hymn, Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassion they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in many fold weakness. To thy great faithfulness, mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath 
provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and the peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Together, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Please join me each time I get to the chorus of this song. Thank you. Last night I lay asleep there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing, and ever as they sang, me taught the voice of angels from heaven in answer. Me taught the voice of angels from heaven in answer rang. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, lift up your gates and sing. In the highest, Hosanna to your King. And then me taught my dream was changed, the streets no longer ran. Hushed were the glad hosannas, the little children sang. The sun grew dark with mystery, the morn was cold and chilled. As the shadow of a cross arose upon a lonely hill, as the shadow of a cross arose upon a lonely hill, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, hark how 
the angel sing. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to your King. And once again the scene was changed, new earth there seemed to be. I saw the holy city beside the tideless seas. The light of God was on its streets, the gates were open wide. And all who would might enter, and no one was denied. No need of moon or stars by night or sun to shine by day. It was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away. It was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, sing, sing for the night is all. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna forevermore. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna forevermore. May his soul rest in peace. All stand, please, for the commendation. Give rest to Christ, your servant, Wilmer Jefferson, with your saints. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. We are mortal, form of the earth, and the earth shall be returned. And so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us commend our brother, Wilmer Jefferson, to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant, Wilmer Jefferson, O sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set him free from every bond, that he may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign 
one God forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Wilmot Jefferson. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and the glorious company of his saints in light. May God grant to him and to them eternal rest in paradise. Amen. Huh? Not limitless then. Not, not limitless. Not having you raise me up? Non limitis. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace. According to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation with the has prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please sit. When I am down and oh my soul so weary When troubles come and my heart burdened be Then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk 
on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. There is no life, no life without its hunger. Each restless heart beats so imperfectly. But when you come and I am filled with wonder, Sometimes I think I glimpse eternity. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. Join me in the chorus for Jeff. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raid me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raid me up to more than I can. Rest in peace. Intro again, intro, intro, intro. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vineyards where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath moved the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. They have built it in an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamp. His day is marching.
marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. With the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us live to make men free. While God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching.